Welcome back, friends. Well, anyways, I saw a story today on YouTube about the best revenge story. That was funny. I won't bore you with that one. You have to go find it yourself. But it started me thinking, I don't know, might be a good topic for everybody to chime in on or do a voice video on. What's the best revenge or instant karma story you've ever seen or been a part of? I have a pretty good one. And in my typical fashion, I'm going to take a real short story and make it long, but we'll try to keep it under the 10 minute mark. Might have to do some editing to pull that one off, but we'll see. So anyways, here's my best instant karma story. It, it, I don't know, it cracks me up. Some people might think I'm an asshole, but I thought I was actually a pretty good guy through the whole thing. But anyways, the story is, I used to be in sales. And for this job, I used to have to fly a lot. I mean, I was on anywhere from two to eight flights a week up and down the East Coast, bouncing city to city, meeting all the customers that I had. And at the time, there was a little air, airline called U.S. Airways, and uh, their specialty was all up and down the East Coast. We had Eastern there for a bit, too, but they went belly up, so U.S. Airways became the airline of choice. And they flew to every single city that I had to fly into and fly out of and drive to and fly out of and whatnot, so... I was racking up miles and I had this job for a few years so I had the top elite frequent flyer status that you can get. Basically I flew so many miles with these people that if I checked in at the gate they'd automatically upgrade me. I, actually I had to ask but you know it's uh, a couple times they'd say, oh, we have an opening, you want first class? Sure, I'll take it, what the hell? But anyways, I was in Philadelphia. And it had been one of those weeks where I'd been flying, and this was my flight home. And I was done work. This was days long before cell phones and laptops where you had to keep on working, even when you're in the airport. I mean, you, when I hit the airport, I'd jot down some notes or go back and try to read my notes and uh, decipher my scribbling so I could write a report up when I get back but anyways I was standing there and going up to the gate and it's one of those oh crap it's crowded I'm not going to get my upgrade tonight is I wanted my upgrade so I could have my two to five free gin and tonics yes I can drink two to five in and tonics when I'm on an airplane from Philadelphia to Boston. It's only like an hour and a half flight. You get a drink fairly quickly, but it can be done and in a responsible fashion. But anyways, I'm standing there in line and the uh, guy in front of me goes up and says, I'd like to put my name on the first class upgrade list. And the girl behind the counter, she's been, oh, she's just a cutie, and she's been real nice to everybody, I could tell, and some people were getting frustrated because it was a full flight, and everybody knows it's her fault, so you get to treat her like shit, and, and she was as polite as could be, she says, sir, yeah, I'll definitely put you on the list, but I just have to tell you, your odds are slim, because there's already, like, four names on the list, and most of first class is checked in, so... I'm betting we only have like one seat or so, so your odds aren't very good. And this guy just went off. She says, I'm sorry, I'm just being honest with you. You know, so when they call your row, your best bet is to get onto the plane. And he went off on this girl. He says, my God, I fly this freaking airline every time. I got so many miles. He's like, you ought to be giving me seats. This is freaking ridiculous. How can you treat somebody like me like this? And just, uh, I haven't... The poor girl is just losing it. She, 
she's getting ready to start crying and whatnot and he finally goes off his way there and uh but he stops right at the edge of the counter in time to hear me say kind of with a, a wink and a grin how's your day going and she kind of looked at me and realized i was trying to cheer her up a little bit and she says okay and i said well i want to put my name on the upgrade list and this guy turns around and he starts in on me <laughs> he's like you stupid son of a bitch didn't you hear anything i just had to yell jesus christ how the hell can you be so stupid to put your name on the list when you have absolutely no freaking chance to get on the list i'm the last person that's got any chance for that upgrade what the hell's the matter with you <laughs> i'm just sitting here kind of grinning and i go well you know don't know until you try it, sir. Have a nice day. I hand her my card and whatnot, and she punches in my frequent flyer number, and you just see this look of other shock go on her face. I said, I'm at the top of the list, aren't I? And she went, yeah. <laughs> I said, you're going to come down and watch him get on the plane while I'm sitting there with my gin and tonic? And she goes, yeah. <laughs> I said, how's your day going now? She goes, a lot better. All right. <laughs> Just remember, I wouldn't yell at you even if I didn't get the upgrade. Because I know it's not your fault. You know, if it's your fault, I'll yell at it. But <laughs> this ain't your fault. So anyways, yeah. I didn't stack, stick around long enough to hear that part of the story. So they called, they called me up for my first class seat. And he had his head in his book or something. He didn't see me get on the plane which made it even better so that she could see the great shock on his face because anyways, I'm sitting there in my first class seat right there on the aisle. Can't miss me. At the time I was skinny, I was only 250 pounds, but yeah, 6'5", 250 pounds. Kind of hard to overlook something like that sitting right on the first aisle of the plane as you get on and walk by. Especially when I have a gin and tonic in my hand that's getting ready to throw at you <laughs> piss me off on the way about but that's another story but anyways yeah i'm sitting there with my gin and tonic with a grin ear to ear and this guy comes walking down the plane and the gal that was checking in was standing by the cockpit door <laughs> oh the look on his face and he turned around and he was going to bark something and all the flight attendants and this girl had the look on their face and go ahead and say something well you heard your ass off this plane so fast and he just had to eat his pride and walk all the way to the back of the plane while I sipped on my gin and tonic. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, that girl got off the plane. She had the biggest smile. I think the rest of her day went just, just wonderfully. Yeah, as well as, I don't know, every now and then I... I try to make people smile or laugh to check out girls down at the grocery store in town. They think I'm nuts, but there's one girl, she says, I love it when I see you in the morning because it sets the rest of the day off. So I had one of them laughing so hard one day. I said, you know, when your day starts going to crap later on and you know it's going to because it's tourist season and you're just a servant to the tourists. I said, just remember this. And she goes, oh, I surely will. I said, the funny part is, the uh, people that are trying to piss you off going to be wondering how you're laughing. <laughs> just make sure you're not laughing at them. That would really put it over the edge. That would just really do it and get you in trouble. So. But to give you an idea about how much I was flying, I was recognizing flight crews. There were a couple pilots I knew by first name. You were the stewardesses and whatnot I knew by first name. And even if I didn't get my upgrade, if I was stuck back in coach, somehow or other, I always ended up with a drink on my tray. A little story about you treat people nice and with a smile and you thank them for helping you out. By God, they'll treat you okay. But yeah, but yeah, so yeah, but um.
I guess I'm going to close out this video right there and to my good buddy from Blue Bike and Doyle, none other than Doyle himself, who's saying, yeah, you probably ought to do a better closing. This one's for you, buddy. Till the next time, ride safe, folks. We'll chat with you later.